Hey guys, Level Cap here, and welcome to Star Wars Battlefront 2. I gotta say, with everything that's been going on with Star Wars lately, I was just inspired, or rather, had the urge to jump into basically my comfort Star Wars game. This game is just so darn good looking, it's easy to jump into and have fun with, and with the latest thing that's gone on with, say, the classic Battlefront release, I was just really amped up to play some some good Star Wars games, and this one is always there. It's maintained a fairly healthy concurrent player base despite DICE dropping this game to Pursue 2042 exclusively, but really I feel like there's few arguments that can be made that Battlefront 2 is really one of the best multiplayer Star Wars games that you can get into right now. It's very accessible and there's always lots of people playing it. Now, let's talk about why Star Wars gaming has been on my mind a lot lately. If you've been hiding under a rock, then you may have not heard about the classic Battlefront collection getting re-released, the old early 2000s era of Battlefront, getting ported to PC and next-gen consoles. Well, the release did not go well. There was a huge amount of server problems and a bunch of bugs with the game not particularly well optimized, and uh, it just got a lot of bad press. Plus, they were asking $35 for the old, early 2000 era Battlefront games remastered, and I say remastered loosely, because it just really didn't feel like the work put into it was particularly impressive. Let me see if I can drop this dude at range. There we go. I know this game is a bit more arcadey, but it does just look and feel great to play, even if it's not like this hardcore recoil management type game. It's actually funny comparing the uh, Battlefront remaster that just launched to the Dark Forces remaster that also just launched, which was made by Night Dive Studios. And they're known for making really good remasters of old school games. And the Dark Forces remaster was fantastic. If you haven't watched that video on my channel yet, uh, go check it out. It's it's like, what if Doom and Star Wars had a baby? And that's essentially Dark Forces, but like retro. Oh, oh, the teammate just saved me there. I haven't played Anakin in a while. Oh crap, that's Grievous. He's doing his move. Get him clones. Oh, he's dead. Bye bye Look at me fighting with my clone troopers. This is, ah, oh, look how good this game looks. I was reading an article about how right now the Disney board is trying to oust Bob Iger at the moment. And George Lucas has like doubled down and said Bob Iger is the, is the way to go. But there's, there's no denying that Disney has made some questionable decisions, especially regarding the Star Wars IP lately. I can certainly see why they might be thinking about it. Man, I forgot that they animated these giant things drilling into the side of these Camino bases. God, Camino as a map must have been such a technical challenge to have all the water and environmental stuff. There's freaking pterodactyl over there. Oh, here we go. Time for Kashyyyk. This is such a cool opening cutscene. I think Kashyyyk is one of the more... Well, I guess it's not underutilized, but I would love to see more Star Wars content around Kashyyyk. The first Fallen Order game had a pretty cool level on Kashyyyk. I like that one a lot. I'd love to see like a Star Wars show or something that takes place on Kashyyyk. There's like a billion Star Wars shows in production. I They just dropped the trailer for The Acolyte, which I gotta say looked interesting. Uh, kind of like if Star Wars had Kung Fu in it. <laughs> but I think Star Wars needs more of that. I think the choreography and the the latest shows, whether it's like Mandalorian or Ahsoka, has really gone downhill. We need some some high-level choreography fight scenes. I love that they made the inside of a turbo tank a, a capture point on this. Time to get sneaky beaky. Got Battlefront 2, jungle environment. Looks so good. <laughs> Nothing like an automatic sniper rifle to ruin somebody's day. This is satisfying. Nothing more terrifying than a robot in the bushes, as I always say. Now, one of the upcoming Star Wars things that I was super excited for, but it sort of run into some production issues, was the Rogue Squadron movie. I don't know if you guys ever played the old Rogue Squadron games uh, back on the N64, but they were solid. Uh, it's basically just Top Gun, but 
as Star Wars. As far as I understand the movie concept, it would just be flying around and running missions as like X-Wing pilots and stuff, which sounds totally badass if it's done well. But the movies have been delayed a bunch of times and it's got Patty Jenkins on as director writer who did the Wonder Woman movies. And I'm, I'm just not totally sold on her yet to handle something like this. All right, come on. This is Dice just flexing. Geonosis looks so freaking good in this game. There's a little pop in there. I'm going to call him out on it. God, look at this. Uh, this just pumps me up for the battle so much. I love the opening cutscenes in this game. Let's see if we can get a little a flank. The old secret flankaroo. Now I just have to hit my shots. I'll take a little help from a teammate. There we go. Alright, let's follow our, our Jedi guy. Oh, that looks sick. We got him. <laughs> that rocket was clutch. Gosh, it's almost this, a shame that EA has this big AAA pipeline worked out where they're just like, yeah, we're not going to work on Battlefront 2 anymore because... Oh, man. Because I just don't even know how they're going to top this game, visually speaking. It's, it's so good. Now, I think one of the next big Star Wars games coming out is uh, Outlaws. Star Wars Outlaws. I've seen the trailer for it. It looks okay. I didn't totally know what to make of it. It kind of looked like uh, one of the Survivor games, but with more of an emphasis on, on solo -y antics. I like the timeline. I think it's supposed to take place between The Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. So I do kind of like the classic timeline like that. I've always been a bigger fan of the original trilogy than any other era of Star Wars. I don't like sand. It's coarse and rough and irritating. And it gets everywhere. Bro, kudos to the Star Wars team for putting this line into the game. It's just such a meme at this point. It's become lovable, it's so bad. Oh, we got Grievous again. Oh, I just pulled him over me. Get him, teammates. <laughs> they got him. Let's get out of here. Gak, you know, other other like world war games or something at least have a real battle to pull from for reference. I mean, this is all fictional battles here, and EA makes them look so freaking realistic, assuming you... Oh, I forgot that I was Jet Trooper. I thought I was about to throw a grenade. <laughs> That's cool. I'll just fly into battle and nab two kills like I like I meant to do that. Oh, we're boarding the transport. I love the narrative progression in these battles. Next stop, mayhem and destruction on the dreadnought. Aye, aye, Rex, or Cody, whoever you are. You know, it's crazy that the reasons why Battlefront 2 may have not continued was that they just didn't monetize the game properly. I think a lot of people who played it a lot had more than enough credits to buy all the skins in the game, so I don't think people were spending a lot of money on the DLC, so they didn't really have a financial incentive to continue working on the game, even though the content itself was really knocking it out of the park. And it's almost a, a sad, ironic situation in that Battlefront 2, if you, if you guys remember, when it launched, it had an incredibly aggressive monetization system where you basically had to pay to unlock Yoda and stuff. And people were pretty annoyed by that, so they rolled it back after getting a ton of bad press. Like, it was, it was bad. I think Bob Iger called up the CEO of EA at the time to, like, have a word with them about it. And then they just never quite figured out how to re-monetize the game after that. Which, uh, which kind of sucks because it ended up becoming a fantastic game. Ooh, Droidica. Oh, get owned, bro. Get owned. I'd be curious to know what you guys think about how to make the Star Wars Battlefront model work. Like, they're clearly going for the live service model. Can that work? Did they just not tweak it properly? Because there's obviously an interest in the game and an interest in continued support but how do you also get money let me know in the comments how you think ea should monetize battlefront so that they can keep working on it and not piss off players yeah we did it oh look at that reactor going critical yeah battlefront 2 really is the undisputed multiplayer king of the star wars universe hopefully we'll get a, a worthy successor someday it's gonna be hard to top this one 
As always guys, thanks for watching and check out my Dark Forces video next. It's a pretty cool blast from the past and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.